Hey, everyone. And let me tell you something. I was on the old uh, tickety talk last week and I was looking through the for you page, you know, that that page that says this is the weird shit you're into. Let us show you more of it. And one of the videos I came across was this uh, young lady. She was visiting her parents for the holidays and, you know, they're just kind of sitting around bored, looking for things to do. And for some reason, <laughs> she decides to share with them, with her siblings and her parents, that she does not know how to jump. Yes, the physical activity of jumping. She couldn't do it. She didn't know how. She even demonstrated it, her lack of ability to jump, just to jump up and down like you would for jumping jacks she, or jump to leap ahead. She didn't know how to do it. She said she never learned to jump. And I thought, yeah, because probably your parents would have had to teach you that first, right? I've got some explaining to do. Let's get into it. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ayana Explains It All, the podcast hosted by the Black Muslim lady lawyer living in the suburbs of Ohio, by the way, raising my children all alone. Harrowing journey it has been. (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Ayana Explains It All is a human interest podcast with dynamic conversations about things you need to know and things you should know, but you don't know because you don't use a search engine. Ayana Explains It All is available on 12 different streaming platforms, including YouTube. My flagship program is Anchor FM and Spotify, but I'm also available on Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Good Pods, Radio Public, and a host of others. Please check the link in my social media bios for available locations. I am on Instagram at Ayana Explains It All with an underscore between each word. My first name is spelled A-Y-A-N-A. That's one N, three A's. You can also find me on TikTok at Ayana Explains It All pod and my Facebook page of Ayana Explains It All. I am on Twitter as Law Girl, L-A-W-G-U-R-R-L. Or you can also find me on my personal Instagram at L-A-G-U-R-R-L for all the regular, run-of-the-mill, everyday smut besides this podcast that I share with the words. I always tell people, I swear and I laugh at inappropriate things and sometimes my humor can be dark. So if you're not into that, just close your eyes when those parts come on. (laughs) Like you would if you were watching a movie, a rated R movie with your parents and there was a, a sex scene that came. Just, you know, put your hands over your eyes, put your hands over your ears and uh, don't listen to those parts. Also, this podcast is a mature audience podcast, but today I'm going to talk about something that you should share with your kids. I've had a couple of episodes where I I talk to the kiddos, but generally speaking, Ayana Explains It All is a mature audience podcast, but feel free to share it with your friends, your neighbors who you like or don't like, your doctor, your insurance guy. If you could get one of your cousins to listen to my podcast, that would be great. Tell everyone to like, subscribe, rate, and review wherever they can. Let me know your opinion of Ayana Explains It All at ayanaexplainsitall at gmail.com. Send me an email. Send me a question. Send me a concern. You can um, rant about things that I've had to say. You can disagree. Please disagree. I hate to be sitting out here just saying these things and no one is disagreeing with me. That would suck. (laughs) That means I'm right about everything. And I know I am not right about everything. I mean, I'm a single mother of two kids. I missed something. (laughs) I missed something. But yeah, I practice law. I am a lawyer. I'm a disability attorney. I work in public service. So this podcast is my labor of love. I needed something to help me relax from my, the hustle and bustle of my everyday life. And I realize in my everyday life that I'm doing a lot of things that I taught myself how to do all this stuff I'm doing. 
I bought a house. I taught myself how to do electrical work, plumbing work, and what I couldn't do myself, I learned how to hire people to do it. I do gardening. I do carpentry work. And again, what I didn't know how to do, I hired someone to do it. But I taught myself how to do all of these things. And it's not because I craved being independent. It is the, the circumstances of my life. I had to rely upon myself for a lot of things. But I also reached out to my community. You know, I had my parents, I had my siblings, I had neighbors, I had friends, all these people who rallied around me to help me with my kids, to help me with my, you know, various projects and things like that. But in my own raising my kids as teenagers, I realized a lot of things about these little people, these little people. I mean, they're they're both taller than me. I have a son and a daughter. They're both way taller than me. But they're still in my in my mind. They're still my babies. Right. My son, who just left for college after the winter semester was done, he um, he was with us for a month and it was incredible. I, I, I saw him in a completely different light. He's more mature. He's responsible. But there are still things that this young man does not know. And in talking to my daughter, I realized there are a lot of things that she still doesn't know. She's 14. He's 18. She's going on 15. For instance, in these last couple weeks, especially last week, I had been watching a lot of the coverage of the congressional speaker of the House election. And I'm watching it and I'm into it. And my daughter would see me watching this and she asked me to explain this to her. And I did my best, I thought, but she still had no idea what I was talking about. And I said, don't they uh, go over these things in school? They, my, both my kids are in public school. And she said, no, we haven't gotten to American government yet, which I, you know, I'm sure they covered a little bit of the basics in elementary school and junior high. But the fundamentals, the, 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 the meat and potatoes things, like the specific things about the Constitution, about American Civil War, about World, World War II and World War I, about, you know, uh, the presidents and things like that, those specific, very specific things like what separates the branches of government? What does each branch of government do specifically? The Civil Rights Act and things like that. I'm sure they have not covered those, which is unfortunate because unlike when I was growing up, kids who are in that age range, that 14 to 18, even 12 to 18, are privy to a lot more information about this country, about this world. My daughter's always talking about environmental harm and the ozone layer and protecting the environment and, and, and science and recycling. And she's much more on top of that than I was when I was her age. And so we talk about that. We talk about environmental politics. We talk about wealthy people and what they can do to help the poor and help the hungry. And, but there are still these things that, as I'm talking to her about the, the Speaker of the House election, you know, the, the, uh, the House of Representatives, finally went ahead and did the vote, and it was 15 votes later, 15 ballot votes later, hours and days, that they finally elected Kevin McCarthy. And I, I'm explaining this to my daughter, and I'm like, if I can't explain this to a 14-year-old, then there's no way someone who is, you know, who is low-functioning, who has a basic education, who is an adult, who's eligible to vote, is going to understand it. And so if it's confusing to her, it's going to be confusing to them. And I, I thought to myself, okay, but it's, it's been my responsibility to teach my children about political ideas, about politics, about politicians, about political parties, about, you know, basic things about this country. So I went onto Google and my daughter and I were sitting yesterday talking and I looked up the citizenship test for the United States. If you Google it, you'll be able to find it. And it's, I believe it's like eight pages of multiple choice questions. And I could answer most of them because I was a government major. I work in government. And so I can answer these questions myself. I work in law. I deal with this stuff every day. But there were some things that even I was like, oh, okay. 
because of the way how they worded the question, it's it's a lot different when you're having to answer a specific targeted question than if you were just spouting off about what you know about the country. For instance, what is the supreme law of the land? It, it's not the Bible, by the way. <laughs> it is the U.S. Constitution. Can you recite the preamble to the U.S. Constitution? Can you recite the, the three inalienable rights in the Declaration of Independence? Who is the commander-in-chief for the U.S. Armed Forces? And what are the branches of the U.S. Armed Forces? Everyone always forgets the Coast Guard, the Marines, the Air Force. But my daughter could name those things. And I was like, yes, she knows something. But there were a lot of things that she had no idea. She had no idea. I said, okay, this is my responsibility. It's my responsibility to teach her about these things so that when she turns 18 and she's ready to vote, she knows the importance of voting, how voting works, how voting works at the state level, how it works at the federal level, how, to, how uh, her vote impacts the entire country, who she's voting for, what these people do in their jobs, what judges and prosecutors do, what senators do. Do people know what senators do? Who do senators represent? Who's your congressional representative in the House of Representatives? Can people name that person? Do you know who you're voting for when you go into the voting booth? And about state laws and city laws and ordinances and taxes. Taxes. I remember having to explain to my son when he got his first job about the taxes that are taken out of his, that are withheld in his pay. Federal, state, uh, Medicare, and him just going, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and me saying, uh, y y yes, nobody likes to pay taxes, but here's what taxes do. Here's what tax money does. Tax money is the reason why you have a good public school that you were, he was in at the time. Taxes are the reasons why the roads get repaired when they break down. Taxes are the reason why when you call 911 for the police, they show up. Taxes are the reason why uh, there are monuments and national parks and bridges. And there is, uh, at least where I live at, there's clean water. Taxes are the reason that you are able to go to college with grant money. He's going to go on and have a career in whatever field, in marketing and business and engineering or whatever he chooses, and he's going to be a tax-paying, voting citizen of the United States. So he needs to understand how the government works and why it's important for you to, to pay your taxes, to do a tax return, how to do a tax return. That was something that I was not taught. There were so many things that I was not taught as a young girl, as a teenager, as a young adult, that I had to figure out for myself or I had to ask people to do things for me because I had no idea. But I was certainly responsible for knowing the information. I mean, I got made fun of, taunted in, by people in my own family because I was very, as they said, book smart and not street smart, meaning I could decipher and analyze what's in a textbook or what's in a, in a, in a fiction, what's in a, what's in a novel, but I didn't have common sense. So I didn't know how to pay a speeding ticket. I didn't know about insurance, like car insurance. I didn't know how to purchase a car. I didn't know how to purchase a house or, you know, things like that. I didn't know about, even as an adult, when I became an adult, I'm learning all about the female anatomy. I didn't know about fibroids and cysts and the different hormonal uh, and the role that hormones play in a woman's menstruation. I had no idea. I had no idea. I just remember when I was 11 years old, I got my period and that was it. There was no discussion of why you get cramps, why your period is heavy or light, why it might change. These are things that we're supposed to be taught by the people in our lives, our parents or parental figures. And a lot of us were not taught 
a lot of us were not told. For whatever reason, people figured that we would go to school and get this information. And let me tell you something. Schools are great for that, but they don't tell you everything. Obviously, you can get to be 14, nearly 15 years old and still not understand the functions of the three branches of the U.S. government. You know, school will tell you about periods and about puberty and about sex, but they won't talk to you about how it affects your mental health. For instance, how menstruation, how PMS, things of that nature, how they affect your mental health. They're not going to deep dive into things. They're going to give you basic things. And so who is left really to teach kids about this? Who is left to teach kids how to jump? It's the parents. The parents are the first teachers. And that young lady was very brave to show to the world that she didn't know how to jump. But in my head, I'm thinking, okay, her parents probably thought we send her to daycare or we send her to school and she'll learn these things. Like how to uh, hula hoop or how to, to jump rope or roller skate. These are things, even for me, learning how to ride a bike, I taught myself how to ride a bike. I got on a bike that had no brakes and I rode it all the way up a hill and then I rode it all the way down. And I had to, I had to do that because the only way I was going to get off this bike is if I fell off of it. And so I'm riding it down the hill and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I had taught myself how to ride a bike. There were so many things that I did not learn because the time was not taken with me to teach me about these things. I got married for the first time at 22. No, 21. I'm Muslim. You know, that's what we do. You get married young. I had no business getting married. I didn't know anything about being a wife. I, didn't, I mean, I knew how to cook and bake, but I didn't know how to cook and bake for a man. I didn't know how to do these things for a husband. You know, what I knew about marriage, I had learned from the um, people at the masjid or the talim circles, the study circles about how to be a wife, how to act like a wife. But it's, it didn't, it's not specific to, for instance, the black community or where my ex-husband was from, from the uh, African community. He was Senegalese. So it's just very generic, basic information. It doesn't teach you how to be a couple. It doesn't teach you how to interact with each other as a couple. It doesn't teach you to be friends, to date each other, to do the, it just teach you this is your role and this is his role. And hopefully, you know, you make it work. And of course it did not work. I had no business, but nobody was there to tell me that. Nobody was telling me that. You know, and I want and I am raising my children a lot different. I'm teaching them everything that they're going to know when they get out into that world. My son is in college. And he had, you know, he had a job at Papa John's during his senior year in high school and over the summer. And when he came home, he worked that job over winter break, too. And he gets his paycheck and he hands it to me. And I looked at him and I said, you know, you can put this in your bank account yourself. My children have bank accounts. They have debit cards. I said, you know how to do this. You can do it yourself. And he goes, yeah, but I just really want you to do this for me. And I said, I'm going to do this for you one last time. But I've shown you how to do this. I've shown you how to make sure you have a sufficient balance in your checking account. I've shown you how to receive checks. I've shown you how to use the ATM. This is something that you're going to have to do for yourself. Children are obviously, when it comes to these, what they see as adult things, as these mature things, they're a little bit scared because they don't want to do it wrong. And they know if mommy does it, mommy's going to do it right and everything's going to be okay. And they just have to take that leap. They have to jump. They have to learn to jump and then jump. But they're scared. They're scared. You know, when I talk to my daughter about government and politics, 
it may, it puts her in the mind of, wow, this is really grown up stuff. When I grow up, when I become an adult, I'm going to have a lot to, to think about. And nobody wants to think about this shit. Nobody wants to think about, you know, electing a representative and paying taxes when they're 14 and 15 years old. But the harsh reality is, is that there's so much information being thrown at kids because of the internet, because of social media, because of videos that they watch, that they're being exposed to these themes early. And so they, we really, really cannot wait until they become young adults, say 18, 19, before we show them the ropes. I saw another video on, talk, on TikTok where the, uh, the mom was explaining to her daughter how to mail a letter, how to buy stamps and mail a letter. And listen, whew. now I'm, I use the, the post office. I actually go to the post office maybe twice a year. I, it's not, you know, I do a lot of things online. I don't ship a lot of stuff. I don't receive a lot of stuff through the, through the actual post office. I mean, I obviously get mail delivered and packages delivered, but going into the post office probably for a young person is very intimidating because where do you stand in line? And what if someone yells at you because you're in the wrong line? And Okay, I work in government, so I know how harsh government employees can be. What if one of the workers yells at you or looks at you like you're stupid and you, you get scared and you start sweating, <laughs> you get anxious? And so the mom is telling the girl exactly what to say to the worker at the counter, what to ask for, what to say, how to put the stamps on the envelope. And someday you're going to have to go into a bank. Someday you're going to have to mail a letter, send a package. Mommy's not always going to be here. I'm, I mean, I have my own life, and hopefully, inshallah, they'll have their own lives. And so I'm going to show you how to do these things, and hopefully you will remember so that when it's time for you to do it, you can do it yourself. You're not texting me like my kids love to text me and ask me, how do you do this? How do you do that? And I, I show them how to do it. I don't get upset. I don't get mad. But I tell them, remember this the next time so you can do this for yourself. This is why you need to know this. This is the importance of this. This is how you interact with people. Showing my children how to interact with people is one of my most favorite things. Because in case you couldn't tell, I am a very forthright person. OK, I don't mince words. I'm not scared of anyone. I don't back down to people who get in my face. I've spoken about this before. I've dealt with depression and anxiety my entire life, like literally since I was four years old. And so I can feel flustered sometimes. And so I have learned I, I have had to learn how to be confident because my confidence was stripped away from me. And this is something that we also have to teach our children, right? We have to build their confidence, not tear it down. And how do we do that? By giving them the tools they need to interact with people, to interact with society, to engage with programs, and to be a good student and to be a good citizen. We, we are the ones who show them and teach them how to do that. We teach them empathy. We teach them compassion. We teach them how to take care of themselves, their personal hygiene, their mental health, their physical health. That all comes from us, the parents, the guardians, the people who are raising them. And I did not get a lot of that when I was growing up. And so I had to teach myself. I had to unlearn a lot of bad, um, a lot of bad behaviors, like bad mental behaviors that I would use to protect myself that were not helpful, they were harmful. And I have had to rebuild my confidence as an adult. My interactions with people when I was young, when I was a little kid, a lot of it was traumatic. A lot of it was abusive. A lot of it was really awful. And so I'm having to be better 
than the people who I saw growing up so that my children learn good behaviors, good manners, um, how to empathize, how to be good helpers, how to be good friends, you know, how to be good friends. But one of my biggest lessons that I, I teach to my children is to look out for yourself. Don't leave your friends behind. Don't leave your friends behind, but look out for yourself. Look out for yourself. And when my son went off to college, I was so scared that he wasn't going to remember to look out for himself. And when I talked to him on the phone, I asked him, you know, are you are you doing things? Are you out in your in your dorm? Are you making friends and, and whatever? And he, you know, he's very laid back, very laid back. And he goes, no, you know, I when I find somebody I vibe with, you know, we're cool, but I'm not he's not a gregarious like going out there and being boisterous and loud and just hanging with a bunch of people. He finds a, a good core group or a good core, you know, one or two people, and he's fine. And here I am worried about him, that he's not going to know how to interact with people, that he's not going to know how to be around them, that, you know, this, this Muslim child who's out there in the world with people who are you know, drinking alcohol, people who are probably doing drugs. He told me a story that I can't even believe the person who did it was not on drugs. But I had to teach him how to cope with other people's behavior, other people's negative, bad, um, unexplainable behavior. In my household, there's no drinking alcohol. There's no drugs at all. And it's not just because I'm Muslim, but because that stuff, to me, is harmful. So my children are not going to grow up seeing that, doing that, none of that. They're not going to grow up seeing abuse in their household, no emotional abuse, no physical abuse, no verbal abuse. And so when they go out there into the world and they're around different people, when they see something like that, they know that it's wrong and they don't engage with it and that they don't do it also. So, yeah, you have to teach your children how to jump. But I would also like to add that even though I've raised my children as a single mother, I have had a community of people behind me helping to show them different things, to show them how to interact out there in the world. For instance, both of my children have been on an airplane. I wasn't on an airplane for the first time until I was 18 years old. My children have been on airplanes they went with their aunt, my sister, my younger sister. She showed them how to do that. And I, I was not offended. I was happy because I cannot do all of this myself. I can't. I couldn't. I didn't. There are people who I relied on to help me show my children how to, as Muslims, pray, to read the Quran, how, you know, how... The, the dynamics work with men and women in our Islamic community, I haven't been able to show them everything. But there have been people around me who have helped me to do that. That's called interdependence. You know, I've done, show, I've done shows about codependence. I've talked about being independent as well. But this is interdependence. This is relying on the people around you who are parents or who are from an older generation or who are professionals in your community, in your religious institutions, who help to guide your children, who you trust, by the way, who you trust. They have to be people that you trust. They have to be people that you trust. If you leave your children in the care of people who are, you know, kind of sketchy, Things might happen to them that you don't want to happen to them. And so sometimes you will keep your kids to yourself. You won't allow others in the community to mentor them, to coach them. Even men and women who are single parents won't date because they don't want their children around strange men and women. You know, I'm using air quotes. We don't trust. We don't know. Because maybe when we were younger, things happened to us when we were left out into the community. We were shown uh, criminal things. We were shown how to be a criminal. 
Kids learned how to sell drugs by watching other people sell drugs. Kids learn how to do drugs by doing drugs with their friends. You don't want that to happen to your kids, and so you keep them to yourself. But while you're keeping them to yourself, they're not learning everything that they need to know. Because you can only teach them so much. And we can go back and forth on this argument, and I do, unfortunately. I hate it when I do this, when I fall into that trap of arguing with men and women. Can a woman raise a boy to be a man? Can a man raise a girl to be a woman? And this is my opinion, strictly my opinion. I raise my children to be good human beings, good, decent human beings. Can I show my son everything about being a man? No, absolutely not. But I can teach him how to be a good human being. And that, to me, is more important than knowing how to be the masculine idea of a person that people have in their heads. A lot of being a man is just masculine stereotypes that people have fed into, that people have bought into, instead of showing a boy how to actually be a good human being, be a good male human being, that makes him a man. You're showing him, oh, the man goes to work and the man comes home and he waits for the woman to take care of the kids in the house and the, the man is the provider and the protector. Even in my own religion, in the religion of Islam, Muslims are very much patriarchal because that's the religion. But a lot of it is also just men imposing their bullshit on women and society. And so we're all falling into these stereotypes. And when we don't conform to these stereotypes, then we're labeled no good. So I want my children to unlearn those stereotypes and learn to be good human beings. Now, what you do as a man while you're being a good human being, fine. What you do as a woman while you're being a good human being, fine. But not doing this or that thing doesn't make you any less of a man. Not doing this or that thing doesn't make you any less of a woman. Cooking and cleaning doesn't make you a woman. Going to work doesn't make you a man. Plenty of men who don't work, who can't work, who can't find a job. So because they're not earning a paycheck, they're not a man. There's plenty of women who can't cook to save their lives. And I'm not the greatest cook in the world, but I can, I can put together something. But I'm not the greatest cook in the world. Does that not make me a woman? And ain't I a woman? So the stereotypes are things that I don't, I don't want my children to buy into these stereotypes because they're harmful. And I did an episode of Ayana Explains It All on stereotypes in romantic relationships and how they're harming romantic relationships and our interactions with persons in our, in the romantic department. And, but from what I see in my interactions with people and my conversations with people is that people are still hung up on these things. They're still very much hung up on them. And because they are so steeped in the psychology of stereotypes of men and women, in the mental illness that this is, they can't have successful relationships because they're not finding people who conform to these ideas because people don't want to anymore because these things don't work. They're harmful. They're hurting them. They saw them when they grew up with their parents and with their aunts and uncles. They saw older people, how they interacted with members of the opposite sex or same sex. And they saw that these things, these routines, these roles, these gender roles were harmful. But mostly these things are not working for them. So they don't want to conform to this. And the people who want to conform, who have conformed, who have bought into this, are upset. They're upset because they're losing their grip. They're losing their grip on their on their you know, on the black community, the black men are losing their grip on black women. Black women are, are falling out of favor with black men because we don't want to conform. 
we don't want to be accommodating. We don't want to be subservient. We don't want to be dominated. We don't want to be controlled. And this is what they want to do. And why aren't you doing it? If you would do this, then we would we would uh, choose you more. We wouldn't have to go look at other communities. We wouldn't have to go overseas if black women would just conform. And these are ideas that I don't want my children to pick up on. So, yeah, I've had to control people they've been around because there are people with these, in my mind, harmful ideas about men and women. I've had to deprogram my children somewhat. You know, in the Islamic religion, marriage is very important. So we start talking about marriage early when girls are puberty age, like 11, 12 years old. Well, I don't want my daughter talking about marriage at 12 years old. So when she goes to the masjid and they're having a study circle and the girls are talking, girls now are talking about marriage and when to get married and who would make a good candidate for marriage, that upsets me because girls should be talking about girl stuff, in my opinion. Not adult things. Marriage is an adult thing. It's not something that young people should be doing. Like I said, I had no business getting married at 21. I had no idea. I hadn't even been out into the world. I had just been in college. So 12-year-olds and 13-year-olds thinking about marriage, talking about marriage, to me is ludicrous. People that age should not be thinking about being a wife. They should be thinking, or a husband even. But a lot of the times, the girls are married to older men, older established men. Because again, the man has to have a job and pay the bills. And the girl is, is going to be the one sitting at home and raising the babies and cooking and cleaning. That's why the girls can be young and it's okay. And the men can be older and it's okay. I don't want my children thinking that that's okay. In my opinion, it is not okay. And there are a lot of pe people who believe that that is their only choice. Their only option is to choose that life for their children. When you become 16, 17, 18, you're going to get married, and that's the end of it. There are a lot of cultures that buy into that. That's their business. That ain't my business. My children did not grow up thinking that. I made sure of it. I made sure that the child bride thing was not a thing in my house. When my children are adults and they are established and they know they've got some uh, grit under their fingernails. They know something about life. They want to get married. That's their business. I don't encourage them or discourage them either way. I want them to be good, healthy adults before they go and enter into a romantic relationship and get married. Because once you get married, everything changes. Once you have a baby, once you get pregnant as a woman, Everything immediately changes. Your body immediately changes. Your brain chemistry changes. Your mental health changes. I was pregnant with my son when I was, um, I was 25 years old, scared out of my mind. I was a new lawyer, had a job. I was still scared. I had no fucking idea what, was, what I was going to do, what was going to happen. Even when I was pregnant with my daughter, I was 30 years old. I was scared. We have to teach these babies how to use the toilet. That thing, all, that is what always tripped me up. The reason why I said, I don't know if I ever want to have any more kids because you have to potty train them. Potty training was probably some of the most scary and stressful part of being a parent for me. Because I thought to myself, and you know, it's, it's mostly because I was trying to live by other people's timelines. You know, your child should know how to walk by this age, and they should know how to talk by this age, and they should be potty trained by this age, and they should know how to read before they go into kindergarten. And I thought, what the fuck? I have to teach my kids all of this stuff before the age of five? 
And I still, I'm still having a rough time over here. And I'm a single mother. And I have to work. And so, yeah, I relied on my parents and my siblings a lot to help me with my kids. My sister was my babysitter for a long time. She helped me a lot with potty training, with helping my kids learn how to read. And I'm very grateful to her for that because I couldn't do it all. You know, we, we, we think we can do it all. We really do because we, we're doing it. But are we doing it successfully? Is everything getting done that needs to be done? Are the children learning everything they're supposed to know to reach these milestones? When my son entered elementary school, he had a hard time reading. Because even though I read with him, he still, he, wa- he wasn't as advanced as the other children in the class. Was I ashamed to get help for him? No, absolutely not. He got reading help. He became an avid reader. Until he got into, I would say, junior high school and the video games took over. <laughs> But he was reading books all the time. I was buying him those uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid books. Those were his favorite books. And my daughter, she needed help with handwriting. Did, was I ashamed? No. I mean, I did the best that I could with teaching my kids how to read, write, and spell and giving them, them support at home and teaching them how to pronounce words and, you know, doing the spelling tests and everything. You know, when you go into these schools, especially the school system that my kids were in, that my kids are in, rather my daughter's still in in high school. They expect that your kids know how to read and write by the time they're in kindergarten. I did the best that I could. But the point is my kids learned. I made sure that they had the resources. I made sure that they knew what they were supposed to know. Was it always easy for them? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But it wasn't from my lack of trying. It wasn't from my lack of teaching them how to do these things. At some point, you know, as far as for my son goes, that initiative has to take over and you have to teach yourself how to do things. And he's been very good at that with some things and other things. He's kind of lazy, like a lot of teenagers. He's been kind of lazy. But I don't have to worry about him at college because he's, he's, you know, he's in that world. He learned how to conform to that world. He's doing the work in the, in class. And I don't have to worry about getting calls from whomever. And he's doing well with his football program. And that's because I made sure he got there. I made sure that my children got the resources and the tools that they needed that they learned the things that they needed to learn to be able to succeed at the next level. But I didn't do it. I didn't do it alone. I would say that I did about 75% of them. I always tell people this. My daughter looks exactly like my sister. <laughs> my sister, Nadira, and I, we are half-siblings, by the way. We don't say half-sibling, but, but, but whatever. And my daughter looks exactly like her. But at the end of the day, these kids came home with me. I was the one who had to clothe and feed them and, you know, check the homework. I was always checking homework. My God. Now that I think my daughter is in high school, I haven't had to check her homework in a while. I think that's one of the things I'm going to miss as they get older. Like, she doesn't need me to do that anymore. She knows how to type. She knows how to use a computer. She knows how to use online resources to get information. She knows how to cite sources. She knows how to speak in front of people. She knows how to write an essay. That was one of the fun things that I got to do because I'm, I'm, I'm a writer, okay? Not an author. I'm a writer. I write and I analyze legal information. I'm very good at writing essays. And I was so happy to be able to teach my children how to write persuasively, how to formulate arguments, how to reach sound conclusions, how to support their arguments. So happy to be able to show them how to do that, to teach them how to do it. 
I take pride in teaching my children these different things. How to write a check, how to mail a letter, how to deposit something into their bank account, how to manage their money. Have you had to talk with your children about credit scores? I talk to my children about credit scores a few times because they don't understand how it works. They don't understand why it's important. And listen, I'm right there with you, kids, because <laughs> whoa, people be sweating over credit scores, sweating. Me too, me included. Why is someone who has a 670 not as worthy as someone who has an 820 of receiving a good interest rate on a loan? Credit score shows your probability of paying back whatever it is you're borrowing. It shows your credit worthiness. But people take it so seriously that they become, you know, kind of mental about it. They freak out over it. You know, I belong to this uh, group on Facebook, the Budget Nista, Budget Nista group. I follow Tiffany in the Budget, the Budget Nista program. And every day there are people obsessed about their credit scores so scared because this number that who even knows I don't even know who came up with credit scores I I could probably look it up and find out but but this number and it's three different credit agencies and you don't know when you go to apply for a loan which credit agency they're going to use and so you're obsessed with the combined number and then you're obsessed with the even individual numbers and then you're obsessed with your credit report and getting things off of your credit. And you're bombarded with all of this information as an adult that you can be overwhelmed because when you were younger, nobody taught you about credit scores. Nobody taught you about loans. Nobody taught you about interest rates and mortgages. I didn't know what the hell a mortgage was. When I bought my house, I had to research all of this. I had to learn about mortgage loans and credit scores and credit reports. I had to learn about all of this stuff myself in the streets, as they say. I had to learn about it in the streets. And good thing <laughs> I was wise enough to choose the right resources to teach me about this. Some shit you learn in the streets, you don't need to be knowing. <laughs> you don't need to know. So I'm telling my kids this now. We had to talk about credit scores and credit worthiness and building your credit and making wise credit decisions. I got my first credit card when I was 18. Again, had no business getting a credit card at 18 because why? I didn't have any needs. I was a, a college student who had two jobs and worked a full course load. What did I need with a credit card? Everything was paid for. Everything was paid for. What did I need a credit card for? But I had a credit card. And I was not good with credit as a young person at all. Even as an adult, I haven't been the best with credit. Now my credit is fantastic, fabulous. I got it together, learn some tips and tricks and pay my bills on time and et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I got a credit score in the 800s. Great, wonderful. I can get whatever car I want, whatever loan I want. Blah, 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 blah. But I had to learn how to make it good. I had to learn how to make myself worthy to, to credit issuers. And because I know how hard it is to do these things, I want to make it easier for my children. So I'm telling them this now when they're young and I'm imparting this wisdom. And not only that, I'm showing them through my own actions how to use things responsibly, how to use what you're given responsibly, how to pay bills on time, why you pay bills, what bills are. These kids don't know what bills are, especially um, health. You know, you get medical provider bills. I get medical provider bills all the time. I have health insurance. I have great health insurance. I still have to pay co-pays. And I still have to wrangle with insurance companies and medical providers because I, it, for whatever reason. But again, something you have to explain to your children that when you get older, because one day you're going to have to have your own insurance, this is what you're going to have to deal with. Because, you know, these things don't get, they don't evolve for some reason. Credit isn't evolving. Health insurance is not evolving in the United States. And so, yeah, when they get older, they're probably going to be dealing with the same shit I'm dealing with. 
And I know my parents had to deal with the same shit I'm dealing with now, too. Because these things, these systems aren't changing for the better. They're not going to get easier. Credit scoring isn't going to go away. Taxes are not going away. Health insurance tied to employment uh, apparently is not going away either. So this is what you're going to have to deal with. And so, yeah, teach your children how to jump. So when they are older, they know when and where to leap. They know when and where to get ahead. They know how to get ahead. They're not turning to the streets to figure out how to make life work for them, how to hustle. They're not hustling for everything, for food, for shelter, for clothes. Teach them how to be responsible. Teach them how to be good human beings. Yeah, teach them how to be a man. Teach them how to be a woman. Teach them that stereotypes are not normative. That being sympathetic and empathetic and compassionate and helpful is normal. That is the norm. That is the norm. Being brutish and mean and ugly and racist and and bigoted, that is abnormal. Teaching children how to hate is abnormal. Teaching them how to love, how to be kind, not just to others, but to themselves. A lot of kids don't know how to do this. And a lot of children are suffering mentally. A lot of young adults are suffering mentally because the world they feel is not kind to them. Because power is not being spoken into them. We have to speak power into our children. We have to give them confidence. Don't tear it down. We have to reassure them. We have to make sure that they know how the world works and what their role is in it and why they are important to it. And the different fundamentals of making life and relationships work for them. So, yeah, teach your children how to jump. And this has been Ayana Explains It All, brought to you by Facts, Figures, and Enlightenment. Take care. <laughs>